recording. So we're recording um, eight one notes starting in the middle of page three. And we were working on example four, where the velocity function is three cosine three t from zero to pi over two. And what we want to do is we want the displacement, we want to express, so there was a little bit of confusion. Now remember, um, when, you, when you're solving for displacement as you did in part B, that's actually net area. Um, so you, the area above is considered positive, the area below is considered negative, and you just take, you know, just add them up, the positive or the negative area, and whatever you get, or you do the, this area minus that area, and that's your, um, your net area or displacement. Distance is going to be total area. So it means anything that's below the x axis gets flipped over and is now treated as positive, so everything's all positive. Hopefully, part D will kind of uh, make sure we're, we're clear on this. So if I go in the positive directions from zero to one, let me, let's integrate that function. So that's three cosine three t. And if you do that in the calculator, uh, sorry, zero to pi over six, not zero to one. My bad, zero to pi over six. That was a positive area, um, or sorry, in the positive direction. If you were to integrate that, and actually, let me clear that. I could do, I could do better. Zero to pi over six. Oh, goodness. Okay. Pi <laughs> over six, three cosine three t. I forgot about my dt also. If you work that out, it actually comes out as one in the calculator. Now, if you integrate from pi over six to pi over two, that's where we're going to negative direction for our velocity, because that was below the x-axis. We got negative two. So my displacement was one plus negative two, or negative one. That's what I got for part B. That is net area. Now, what was the distance I traveled in the positive direction? Well, I traveled one, whatever units I have, like meters or feet, was a distance, not displacement, the distance I traveled in the negative direction, it was actually the absolute value of negative two, which is two, because remember, that would be for distance, you do the um, absolute value of your velocity function. So now the total distance I travel is one plus two, which is three, which is total area. Another way to do this is using numerical integration, which is the TI-84 calculator. That's what nth means. Or, um, you know, we, select, we say FNNT. Um, so you just simply type this in your calculator and you would also get three if you did that correctly in the calculator. And of course, make sure in radiant mode. Um, so that wraps up that example. Uh, let's do some more examples so you guys uh, see some action. And I think doing um, a shorter video would probably be better. Um, so example five, a particle moving along the x-axis starts at x equals three when t equals zero, okay? So that means that, um, s of zero equals three. That's what that means. The graph of its velocity function, as you see, is right there. Okay, great. What is the position after six seconds? Okay, so what you need to do is you need to first do the integral from zero to six of your velocity function times dt. Now, if you think about it, we don't have a velocity function, we have a graph. Actually, let me do this in black. We consider all this as positive area. And that's negative area, right? So if I were to work that out, uh, this area I think is eight. Oh goodness, eight. 
steady hands here, right? This area is going to be four, and that's going to be negative eight. So my displacement is going to be eight plus negative eight plus four. So my displacement is going to be four. So remember, displacement is going to equal the change in position, right? So this integral here, so four, oh, sorry, the final position is going to be um, s of six actually let me take that back this is kind of confusing let me cross that off this is really confusing so our displacement is going to equal s of six minus s of zero remember displacement was four that's a change that's the integral of velocity so four equals S of six, which I want to find. S of zero to know is three. So therefore S of six is going to be seven. So essentially what you're doing is you're adding your displacement to your initial position. <clears throat> so remember S of B minus S of A equals your displacement. So you can think of S of B equaling your displacement plus s of a because remember your displacement is your change of position right or delta s so you're adding delta s to your initial position so that's one way you could think of it too initial position plus delta s equals the final position um, that's because Delta S is the integral of the velocity. That's why we're calling this integral as net change, the whole section of this, uh, the whole title of the section here. You're doing an integral and that represents a net change, the net area of our position, which we got as four or our displacement. Now, let me erase some of this stuff here because it's getting a little busy. Remember, our final position was uh, seven. Now, what's going to be the total distance traveled? That's going to be eight plus apps, the value of my negative area plus four. In this case, my total distance is 20, because that's total area. Um, and we can apply this to other problems other than velocity. It doesn't always have to be for velocity. Uh, and this is something that they do often. Usually this is the first question on the AP exam or for the free response. They tend to ask this question often. Let's say capital RT is a rate of change of some quantity, Q of T. Then of course, the derivative of the quantity will be the rate of change. This could you know, deal with like maybe um, how much water is being poured into a tank or um, um, I don't know, you could think of like maybe how many, um, how population is changing over time, how many people are coming into a, a room or a building. Um, and so if we let R of T equal Q prime of T, then the antiderivative of R of T or the antiderivative of Q prime of T, because R equals Q prime for a time run from T1 to T2 can be expressed as Q T2 minus q t1 using the fundamental theorem of calculus. Um, so let's look at example six here. What w prime of t is the rate of growth of a child in pounds per year? Fine, so w prime is a, is a rate. So it means that w will be the weight. So what does this represent? This will be w10 minus w6. That's what this equals. And so the way you would actually type this out, we do there's a text box over here. The way I would actually type this out, I would say this integral represents the change in the child's weight from age six to age 10. And um, it represents the child's weight in pounds. In pounds. 
There we go. That's example six. Because W10 is a weight at age 10. W6 is the weight at age six. The difference, obviously, is how much weight you gain from age six to age 10. So like, for example, I'll use me as an example. So I'm 43. Um, I think I weigh 205 pounds. I don't know. Uh, age 40, actually, when I got married, I was, I was, I was, I was much skinnier. So <laughs> uh, when I got married, it was 2014, so seven years ago. Uh, so I was at 37 years old. So uh, you can say I weighed 180 pounds. <laughs> so like, you know, for example, if you use like, you know, we use capital E for Mr. E. <laughs> so, and 43 is uh, my, my weight at age 43. So let's, let's say I weigh 205 pounds right now. And then uh, when I was, um, actually I got married when I was 36. Um, I think that's right, yeah. <laughs> let's say I weighed 180 pounds. Actually, I was looking at some old photos um, when I was trying my uh, weddings. <laughs> I definitely looked a lot thinner. I blame this pandemic. Um, so obviously my change in weight was 25 pounds during that seven year time frame. So if I had a function that represented um, my rate of weight gain <laughs> or, or weight change, um, let's say I call it E prime of T, will be my, my rate of weight change. Because you can lose weight too, right? I, you know, I mean, if I decide to eat better or exercise, but <laughs> let's say the rate of weight change, right? If I integrate this, you know, E prime of T dt from 36 to 43, that's going to represent um, how much weight I've gained from age 36 to age 43 in pounds. So that's what that would be. So I hope that makes a little more sense. Um, now, three things that matter here. Um, the three things that matter is that you have to um, tell me what is changing, units, and time frame. So what is changing? Units and time frame. We're going to do more of these in just a sec. This is a very common AP style problem. Uh, they love this, you know, like what's in context, what's happening, because you've got to really understand what you're doing. Um, for an exam, I would make this worth three points, right? You know, if you told me what is changing, you gave me the units and gave me the time frame. On the AP, it is all worth one point. You miss any of those three things, you don't get the point. Um, you get zero. But that's something they could ask. Uh, hey, what does this represent um, in context of this problem? And so you have to just realize that if I'm integrating a rate, then it gives me just what the units were. So if I'm integrating the rate of um, weight change, then the integral of, of the, integral, the integral of weight change is going to be just my weight. But then you're doing it for two different uh, time periods, so you got to you know, or two, two different um, moments in time, so you got to make sure you mention that. And of course, your units too. Uh, so look at a couple more here. And actually, well, there's one class a little early today because um, I know you guys have another class and I'm doing a lot of dense material today. So those worksheets, don't worry about them. We'll we'll get to them on Thursday. You know, if we get to them. What I'll do for homework is I'll do a video on pages five through six. I'll do a Google form, and I'll do some textbook problems on eight point one, just eight point one. And then we'll, of course, discuss on Thursday. So I'm going to go a little lighter um, on you guys instead of like throwing a worksheet as well. Um, anyway, let's look at this one here. So in this case, we're looking at honeybee population. You start with 100 bees. Um, so if you start with 100 bees, that means that R0 is 100. Sorry. Um, no, I, I, I don't know what that means. Let me take that back. Um, Give me one sec here. Um, let's do this. Let's call B of T the B population. So what this means is that the integral of R of T DT will equal B of T. Because R is the rate of Bs per week. So, 
But anyway, um, 100 B positive starts with 100 B, so it means that B is zero equals 100. So really, R of T is a derivative because it is a rate, and it's something per week, per unit time. Um, so what does this represent? This represents the number of Bs after 13 weeks. Because 100 is your initial. Remember, that's our initial population, which is B of zero. And remember, I, I just, I literally bit call B of T the B population. Um, and this right here, Is increase or decrease in B population for the first 13 weeks. Um, so R of T is obviously is going to be my derivative of the B population. And that's where uh, B of T again is my B population. So I made up a function there for that one, just to make sense of it all. Um, and again, if you kind of look at this one more time, if R of T equals B prime of T from zero to 13, you're integrating a, a derivative, so it becomes just the original function, B 13 minus B zero. And I know B0 is 100. Um, and this right here, <clears throat> um, you know, just kind of repeat that. So that's why B13 is 100 plus that integral from 0 to 13 of B prime T dt. Remember, B prime is R, R of T. So that's why that um, expression 100 plus integral, it represents the number of Bs you have after 13 weeks. Uh, that's what's happening there for that one. Um, so again, it's little, it could be a little mind bending, but if you just realize that uh, if you're integrating a rate, that's actually gonna get to, then you eliminate the time unit and it can just get to the number of Bs. Um, and from that time frame, right, from zero to 13. But we had 100 being added, meaning that, okay, we start off with 100 and then we added some, that we had an increase or decrease of Bs. Of course, if you are a little more socially aware, you know, B population is declining. Um, but anyway, we don't need to get into social aspects of this. Well, let's do one more example eight and then we'll, we'll have soft class for today. Initial water tank contains that much feet of water, cubic feet of water. Water begins to drain from a tank at that rate. How many cubic feet were made after three hours? Okay, so it's draining. So you're losing water. So that's a negative change. So you start with 100 minus the integral from 0 to 3 of your rate. times dt. And that's how you would express that answer. <clears throat> um, now, if you want to actually um, work it out, um, you would need to um, actually use a calculator and work all that stuff out. And let me actually make sure I'm doing this correctly here. Yeah, okay. So then you'd use a calculator to do this. Um, I think you could, you could do it. No, I don't know if I would do this. I don't, I don't, I wouldn't suggest doing this by hand. You could, but it's a little, little trick. I would use a calculator. But again, you know, this right here, you know, let's say we call um, 
WT, the volume of water, then W prime of T is um, the rate at which water volume changes. So that's W prime of T right here. And so that's what I'm integrating. So when you integrate W prime of T from A to B of DT, that's just going to be um, WB minus W0. Or in this case, um, W3 minus W0 because our upper limit's three. Or that's A, by the way, sorry. So um, that's what we're, we're, we're doing here. Uh, this will give us how much remains after uh, three hours. Because again, um, if, you, if you integrate from A to B of W prime of T, that's WB minus WA, or in this case, we're doing 100 minus W3 minus W0. And I already know that W, what W0 um, is. Um, so, so that, you know, that, that just kind of just goes away and that gets me W3. So let's work this out right now. Um, so let me get a calculator here. Oh, let's see what we get. I'll end class after that. So 100 minus alpha window, Fn int, zero to three. And uh, that's gonna be a fun one. The alpha y equals to a fraction 30 e x over three one plus e x over three dx. And I should get 44.18. And that gives me the change I expect in volume. Um, well, this rate gives me a change of volume I expect after three hours and take away from 100. So I get 44.1896, or actually 44.190 cubic feet. So you guys have a chance to do some problems. I'll make sure you guys get the solution keys as well. Uh, I'll do a video on the remaining parts of this so you guys watch that. Um, so again, you have a couple days to kind of simmer over this. Um, you know, so again, video, Google form, and um, textbook prompt. I'm not gonna sign any worksheet stuff. Uh, worksheets 10, 11, maybe we could revisit those on Thursday. Um, and then we do our last section um, on Thursday and then we're almost done with the class. So, and I'll start um, um, populating school with like the test date um, other materials as well. So, okay, so in class right now, if you do you want to stick around, I do have a few minutes. If um, you want clarif clarification about any of the examples we covered or any of the um, homework problems we did, I think homework problems we did were pretty thorough. But um, this figure right here was a pretty big application of the integral that we just uh, had discussion about. So, again, um, if you guys are free to go, let me uh, stop recording.